Good morning, one and all, and welcome to today's video. So today I have four pairs on watch. Those are dollar CAD, Euro Aussie, Aussie dollar, and dollar yen. So let's break these pairs down for you now, starting with my favorite of the bunch, which is dollar CAD. So on the higher time frames, the narrative, as I see it, is as I've explained in my previous videos, I've been looking at this pair for a little while for a potential entry. The narrative, as I see it, is that we have broken above a significant high here by way of this one, two, three touch structure where the second touch breaks above the first touch but doesn't tap into the area of value. The third touch breaks above the second and taps into the area of value and breaks above it, which is typically what we see on the higher time frames before that move to the downside. We even have, it's a bit of a shallow one, just to touch on it, we even have this kind of head and shoulders pattern. With head and shoulders patterns, we generally speaking, we notice that the right shoulder usually protrudes slightly higher than the left. Tick, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, break of the neckline, and then we blast to the downside. And then we completely smash through the base of this structure here. So we have this structure here. Whoops, do excuse that drawing. And usually this, the start of the structure, which is what we call the 90% rule, is usually where we either see reversals to the upside, which was possible. And the reason it was possible is because we we near missed. We had a near miss here to this high here. So it was always possible that we could perhaps break below, push back up, and then move up to take out this high, which we near missed to. And then we would have this kind of expanding pattern where we have higher highs and equal or lower lows, but that never happened. We just smashed straight through the base of the structure, which is another thing which we typically see at the 90% or at the start of a piece of structure. That gave me a clue that there was not enough liquidity here to send price to the upside to take out this near miss, which, which this high and this high near miss too. So that gave me a clue that this was just a scoop background to tap into this consolidation here, which you can see on the daily and that we would likely just break slightly above, push back down, and then we would likely push to the downside to tap into this low, which this low near missed too, and then potentially, once we're down here, then tap into this high, which these highs near missed too. That was the narrative and one of the clues, because those of us who trade the Falcon strategy are always analysing the nature of the market, so we're analysing how price got to an area of value, not just if it got to an area of value, the clue for me is that you can see that we moved up correctively. This is exhaustive price action. Suggest it, this is not indicative of a move to the upside. So then as I drilled down, what happened yesterday, we had exactly what I was anticipating. We tapped into the area of value by way of a one, two, three touch structure, which had a one, two, three middle section. I said to you the like likely reason that we were moving down correctively here was because some people trying to sell this whilst there were still orders in this area which kept dragging price up so what happens we tap into the area and then we move down impulsively suggesting that that was uh, at the moment at least suggesting that that was actually the case and now you can see that price is correcting sideways which is also what i was anticipating there was a slight correction here, but you would have had to trade through swap hours, which is something that I see a lot of newbies actually doing. And what's happened here? Have I just deleted something off my chart? Let's just rewind a little bit. Right, there we go. Let's leave that on the chart. Let's put that back in its box. Let's take that off the screen. So what I'll be looking for today is the following. You can see it's already started to happen, but I'll be looking for price to correct, and then I'll be looking to get short on the break of, flat, of a flag such as this. The impulse down is the market and the bigger players showing their hand, and the correction afterwards is usually, once we've tapped into an area of value, usually just them stacking their orders for the next wave lower. You might be thinking, am I not bothered about that low? I'm not bothered about that low because price has already done what it needed to do. If it's going to reject from there, then where is it going to? It's already tapped into the area of significance. So if it was going to form anything more complex, it would likely do so at the start of this channel here, structure channel, whatever you want to call it. The base of that is here. I'm just cutting through this because it's just a volatility spike. So if price was going to do anything or correct more deeply, it would likely do so there. 
And by that point, we would be running at something in the region of 45%. So I have set a Google Calendar reminder to remind me to check this in an hour's time just to see how this correction is looking. At the moment, we have one bottom. I know I've drawn it with three here, but that's just an illustration. What I what we're typically looking for is two bottoms. So we're trying to determine where the correction actually is. We're trying trying to determine where the structure of this tight flag is. So until this has a second bottom, I will not be looking to get short within or on the break of it because there is no structure to work with. Once we push up, then we have two bottoms. Then I will set an entry on the break while simultaneously be looking for a risk entry within the flag. Okay. And then if we get the risk entry, I will cancel the reduced risk entry on the order on the, the reduced risk entry order on the break. And if we don't, I will just let it trigger me in and then let the trade play out. So that is dollar CAD. Let's move on to the next pair. That's what I'm going to be looking for. A Google Calendar reminder I have set in an hour's time to remind me to check this that pair. Okay, so on the higher time frames, Euro Aussie. Uh, now we do have economic data coming out of the UK in a minute's time. So it's 6.59 as I speak. Now, whether that has any bearing on this, given the correlation between the euro and the pound, remains to be seen. We shall, I'm sure we'll discover that in a minute's time while I'm making this video, whether it does or not. But the narrative on the higher time frames as I see it is that Euro Aussie has tapped into, we tapped into this area. Okay, this is a bit of a soft sort of inflection point there, but we have an area of consolidation which we tapped into there by way of this three touch structure we have the second touch that breaks up at the above the first we have the middle section then we break above the second touch tap into this area of consolidation and then aggressively move to the downside giving me a clue that that is a completed piece of structure okay that we then tap into this area here which just so happens to be if i was to measure this okay at that moment it's as we've pushed down to here we measure it from range to range we push all the way down to here, push all the way back up. And what a coincidence, we retrace 50% of the move, which is what we often see. And we tap into this area of volume. Okay, so there was volume here. We know there was volume because we can see it there. And also this high was the causation of the move, which broke through this brick wall, suggesting that there will likely be a lot of uh, volume there. What happens? We tap into that area. We near miss to it. OK, I've talked about this previously. We near missed to this area here and then we moved down and then likely the liquidity that was still in that area and being placed in that area caused price to break above, which is what we typically see on the higher time frames before a move to the downside. And then we get the impulse correction continuation, which is what we typically see. So at this moment in time, although we have kind of rejected off of this area of consolidation and moved up, there is no reason at this moment in time, although we kind of have what could look like a middle section to push up to give us that kind of one, two, three st structure there, we've already tapped into that high. So price doesn't need to do that. Okay. So although we are trading above this low here, which is partly why this is lower down on the list, you can see as I drill down that we have an area of consolidation here, which price has tapped into and rejected from okay giving me a clue especially once again as we've moved up very correctively that this was not an area of value yes we broke that by way of a descending structure and at that moment in time we could have been seeing an impulsive move to the upside to potentially tap, tap into those highs again however look at look at how if i just drill down look at how we've moved up from this area okay so if i just take that off the chart we moved up from this area in a non-progressive style, so a non-progressive manner. So if I just remove that off, off the chart, you can see we've moved up in a very non-progressive way, giving me a clue that we would likely form some kind of ending structure where we get this. Okay, one, two, three, where the second touch breaks above the first touch but doesn't tap into this sharp hook point. The fact that it's sharp gives me a clue that there's a lot of liquidity there. The third touch breaks above the second and taps, it, taps into the area of value. And then what do you know? We get that impulsive move down, which I was anticipating. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now you can see, as with um, as with uh, dollar CAD, we are starting to correct. So we've had that impulse down followed by correction just to touch on it we also have potentially a little um mini head and shoulders pattern left shoulder head right shoulder so what i'll be looking for from this pair today we just get those brushes whoops 
get those brushes off the chart is are we looking for the following now given how sharply this is pulled up i wouldn't be surprised if i if uh, i only managed to get a risk entry on a flag such as this so i wouldn't be surprised if we get a slightly slightly bigger flag like that and if we do i'll be looking only for the risk entry within the flag uh, because uh, it would skew the risk to reward to take a, uh, a reduced reduced risk entry on the break but as it stands at this moment in time, I will still be, until the market uh, gives me reason to believe otherwise, I will still be looking for either a reduced risk entry on the break or a risk entry within the flag. And then I'll be able to manage it down to these lows for something in the region of 35 to 4%. Um, am I bothered about this low? No, I'm not bothered about that because we have already tapped into the area of value. So price has no reason to reject from here. If we did reject from anywhere, it would likely be, once again, it would likely be the base of this structure okay and then possibly because we have a, a sharp area there set just above this one which is partly why this is lower down the li list we we might perhaps reject from there push up to tap into the next area which is here given that there was also volume here okay enough volume for price to break through all of this so that's always a factor in my thinking as well so i'm always factoring that in as with dollar cad i've set a um, set a Google Calendar reminder to remind me to check this pair in an hour's time just to see how it's looking. And if nothing's ready by that point, you can see we have one bottom there, but we don't have a second bottom. So just as with Dollar Cad, I'll be waiting for more development from this pair. So that's why there's no alerts on the uh, no alerts on the chart at the moment. I'm just setting Google Calendar reminders to remind me to check this now that the market has kind of shown its hand. So uh, Aussie Dollar. On the flip side, I said to you that if the, do the dollar was moving down, then Aussie dollar would likely move up. You can see that on the higher time frames, we have tapped into this sharp area. This is partly lower down on the list, as I explained yesterday, because we didn't tap into the major low. Um, okay, whereas with Euro Aussie, you can see we have tapped into an area of more significance, whereas uh, uh, with Aussie dollar, we've tapped into more of a, a bit of an inflection point there. But regardless, we have a sharp move down, sharp move up. We tap into that way, uh, into that area by way of a reversal structure. Then we start to move up, at, at, not at this point, but afterwards we start to move up more impulsively. Uh, and we have those impulse correction continuations that we look for. We have a near miss to these highs, suggesting that this is merely a scoop back round before a move back up to take out that high and these highs that we near missed too. Okay. And as I drill down, you will see the area of consolidation, the area of value. So we smashed through this area here, price left a footprint. Okay. Sharp move down, sharp move up. How did we get to that area? We got to that area by way, by way of a reversal structure. So when I see this corrective move up, that gives me a clue that people are trying to buy this whilst the orders which are being placed down here and that are still in this area will likely drag price down. This often causes an impulsive move down to the area as these people get washed out that tried to buy here. We usually then tap below the low and then move up aggressively, which is exactly what's happened. OK, and once again, I've just ignored this volatility spike because if we just switch to the line chart, it doesn't appear. And that's the case on multiple time frames, giving me a clue that this is just volatility caused by no doubt some news announcement. OK, and if you look at the time, as I said yesterday, 1300 hours, that is when US economic data comes out, when the liquidity is lower. OK, and when the moves being uh, the 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 moves being caused within that time are not indicative of the sentiment of the market. They're indicative of the market being moved around by a small number of people because the liquidity is lower and the, the volume is not in the market. Okay. So what I'll be looking for from this pair is the following. I'll be looking for the same thing again. I'll be looking for once again, given how sharply this is pulled back, I wouldn't be surprised if I only managed to get the risk entry within the flag, which I would be fine with because that would increase the risk to reward. But as it stands until the market tells me otherwise, what I'll be looking for is I'll be looking for price to correct. And then I'll be looking to get long on the break of the flag or within it. And then I'll be able to manage this once again to the start, the base of this piece of structure, which is here. Okay, the 90% rule where we could see deeper corrections or price coming back down to these lows. I'll be able to manage it there for, uh, up to that area for something in the region of 2 
two and a half percent. Of course, if we got the risk entry within the flag, the uh, risk to reward would increase. And then my target would be these these highs, which we near missed too, which you can't even see now because they're higher time frame. OK, so that is what I'm going to be looking for. Once again, I've set a Google calendar remind me to remind me to check this pair in an hour's time just to see how this is developing. And of course, if it just drops out, because the market, as I said yesterday, can do, can do anything at any time. If we just drop out, then I'm just going to take this pair off of watch. I'm not attached to anything that the market does or has to do. Okay, so that is, uh, whoops, that is Aussie dollar. So last up, let's get through this because we've got about, I've got, I'm limited on trading view to 20 minutes per video. So that's why I rush a little bit. Okay, so on this one, the what the reason this is lower down on the list is because we have an all I don't think it's an all time high on everybody's data it's an all time high on my data um but we have a very very significant high which we tapped into but didn't break above as uh, and as I've explained we usually break above the highs on the higher time frame if we're going to move to the downside not just tap into them these very very significant ones and in particular all time highs however we do have a near miss here to this low that's a tick in the box um but one of the things that makes me think or made me think that we may be breaking above here is because if we just drill down, OK, you can see we've moved up. Prices pull back all the way down. Prices pull back very sharply. OK, now one of the reasons that price often often does that is if we're going to tap into that high, because as I've explained with the other pairs, um, uh, what's happening is a lot of people are trying to sell this and these sharp moves up are often orders being placed in this area and orders that are still up there dragging price back up so then we see rather than having tight consolidations like this we see more of this this kind of swing in this scooping nature because that's what's happening a lot of the time and we also have just to touch on it we have a reversal structure here okay so we tap into a sharp move here by way of a one two three and then we impulse to the upside so this could be as i explained in yesterday's video this could be, if I just drill down, uh, this could be a move down to here. We may near miss to that area. Then we tap into it, and this becomes a bull flag. Okay, so we have an impulse correction continuation and a bull flag to tap into those highs and break above the, the highs that we near miss to before the move to the downside. However, that doesn't mean that we can't capitalize on a move to the, to the, downs uh, to the downside in the meantime. So what happens? Um, we have this area of consolidation here, which caused a big runoff, okay, giving me a clue that there's liquidity here. We also wick to this area and not through it, giving me a clue that potentially this was the second touch of a three-touch structure where the second touch breaks above the first. This becomes the third touch, which taps into the area. And I said yes, in yesterday's video, we may break slightly higher to tap into some of this volume, given that there was a sharp move here as well, which is which is exactly what happened. The other clue for me that that would happen is that we moved down very correctively. Why did we, why did we move down correctively? Likely because people were trying to sell this whilst the orders that was being placed in this area and that were still in that area were dragging price up. So then we moved to the upside. We have a slight near miss there. We wash out all the people that tried to sell there. And then we move to the downside. So what are we looking for from this pair? So even if this is only a move down to here, there is still profit potential to be made. And one of the ways that we determine that is we switch to the what um, we um, drag the risk to reward tool down to see what we're working with. In this instance, I will only be looking for a risk entry because you can see we've pulled back very sharply. And if I was to try and get short on the break of a flag such as this, it would massively skew the risk to reward. OK, so what I'll be looking for in this instance, because of how sharply we've pulled up and this is looking like a larger structure, is if we get a two touch flag. So this is the first touch and we get a three touch structural approach, which is typically what we would see higher up in the run. We don't normally see the, these structures so much. However, given the descending nature of this, I wouldn't be surprised if we get this. If we get this two touch flag with a three touch structural approach, then I'll look to get short with a risk entry. And then, Or if we just get a, a three touch flag like that, the same rules apply. I would still... Um, look to get short with the risk entry but i've color coded these in order of preference the market does not care which one we prefer and but if any of these shape up then are we looking to place a trade i have an alert set just below that high just to see if we tap into that and if we don't then i will not be looking to place a trade i hope you've enjoyed this video folks have a great day have a great weekend and i will speak to you again in the next one thanks for watching